Welcome back. This is uh, session five of carving a magnum drake canvas back cork bodied hunting decoy. And in the previous video, we kind of got all of the rough assembly done and sh shaped the body. In this video, I'm going to be using some hand tools, some files, and uh, sandpaper to get things smoothed out, smooth out these glue joints. And then we'll uh, do some filling around the neck joint just to smooth that out a little bit. All of this in preparation for sealing the decoy. So let's get going. I'm just going to be using a, a wood file and smoothing out these areas that we made the cork putty, if you want to call it that. And uh, I won't show a lot of this type of work because it's pretty repetitive. But we want to smooth things out and then go along this glue joint, take off any excess glue, make sure there's a good match between the body and the bottom board. Pretty happy with the seal we've got going there. It looks pretty healthy. So I'll do a little work on that. Then we're going to do some just rough sanding and uh, then move on to the neck joint. Now I'm just going to spend some time with uh, 90 grit or 80 grit sandpaper and just work the entire decoy smooth things down. There's just no substitute for sanding. And I won't just make you watch me sand, but just know you have to spend a pretty significant amount of time just working the cork, trying to smooth things down and get it ready for sealing. I'll be back. In this next step, I'm going to use uh, JB Weld Wood Restore Repair Putty. Uh, there are lots of options for neck filler. Tough Carve is a brand that I've heard is a good one for this purpose. Uh, my goal here is, well, number one, you don't have to put any putty on the neck. There's a good tight neck joint there. If you're satisfied with that, go with it as it is. I'm just going to show you a method to go ahead and, if you want, add a little more softness in that neck joint. This is a two-part putty, so it's got a hardener that you mix in with it, and it hardens pretty quickly, so you have to work pretty quickly. Make sure you get a good thorough mix. And then I'm going to use, I use some acetone by the way to clean the area around this joint so that removes any residual dust. And I'm using this to just make sure I've got putty pushed into the neck joint area. Again, less is better here, in my opinion, so you don't end up with a big, thick piece of uh, putty. This may be hard to see in the video, um, but I've got a piece of thin plastic that I cut out of a like a, a tup, Tupperware cup or a plastic container that you buy food in. And I'm just using that to go around the neck joint here and try to get a, a nice smooth blend. Let's see if you can still see that in the video and I'm not in the way. You have kind of a concaved 
shape. And then I'm scraping off any excess. In an area like back here that's hard to get to, that's why I put a, a glove on. Just gonna pull that around and use my gloved finger. I need a little bit more material in that area. Just kind of blend that out. Gonna do the same thing over here in this back area of the neck. Push it in there. Feel like I'm doing a medical video here. Okay, I'm gonna call that good. Give you a good look at that all the way around. There's just enough in there to blend once it's dried or set. And then we'll move on. All right, we've got the neck joint filled. And while that's setting, I do want to sand the bottom of the uh, cedar board and make sure that's ready for sealing. You can do that by hand sanding. I happen to have a belt sander, the luxury of a belt sander, so I'm going to do it that way. And I'm going to do it in the shadow of my good friends Bob Sutton and Jimmy Vizier. I don't know who that young guy is, but um, that's one of the things I love about decoy carving is the tradition. Sorry about that, but I'm going to leave that part in because these guys were good friends. They've passed away, but their uh, tradition of decoy carving continues. And again, that's one of the things I love about decoy carving is when you're done working on something, you've got something you can give to your kids, to your families, to someone else, a good friend. I always use a respirator and hearing protection because the uh, belt sander is pretty loud and dusty and you just have to maintain a good grip on the decoy and work it back and forth across the belt and gradually take off material until the bottom of the decoy is smooth. Okay, I've got to get that neck joint sanded but I'm going to go ahead and brand the decoy. This is a fun part of carving for me because it signifies that we're getting close to being done with the carving. And I put a brand on each decoy that I make. It's kind of a permanent mark. There we go, getting close. All right, this was a shorter video today, but uh, I think it's a good place to stop because I need to let this putty set overnight and then it won't take long to sand that off in the morning and then we'll work on sealing the decoy and we need to do that before we can work on the keel because we need to float the decoy in order to get the weight, the proper amount of weight in the keel, the position of the weight in the keel. Uh, I've done some flotation videos, you might refer to those, but this will be a real life test of this decoy that I've never floated before, and we'll give it a try. It has to self right because in many of the show contests, they put them in upside down, they have to self right kind of following the tradition of, you know, throwing your decoys out in a boat and not wanting to chase after them to make sure they upright and toss them out.
So it's been a good day of carving. I look forward to the next session. Thanks for joining me. Tom Christie signing out.